Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com, and this is Center Seat, my Star Trek podcast. So as everyone who is a Star Trek fan knows, September 8th, 2022 was the 56th anniversary of the premiere of Star Trek, and uh, they had another celebration, another Star Trek day this year, and I decided to uh, go over some of the notes and observations of that live stream that I watched live. Uh, It just so happened that I was uh, working from home that day, and I was able to have it on as I was working. And you can probably guess how much work I actually got done during those uh, about two hours. (laughs) But it was still a lot of fun. So this year's Star Trek Day was hosted by Tawny Newsom and Paul F. Tompkins. Uh, They are the co-hosts of the Star Trek Pod Directive podcast. Uh, Although there hasn't been a new episode since summer of 2021, but they did announce later in the, the, the live stream, the broadcast, that uh, new episodes would be, will be returning in February 2023. And uh, in case you don't know, Tawny Newsom is uh, one of the main uh, voice actors for or on Star Trek Lower Decks. And I think Paul F. Tompkins has also done voice work. I'm not sure. Anyway. Okay. So they were the hosts, uh, although the live stream actually was kicked off by uh, the actress who played, oh boy, I should have looked that up, uh, the, uh, the, the, Kl- the female Klingon who basically ascended to the chancellorship, maybe, or leading the Klingons in this, in the, and I'm referring to Star Trek Discovery, and uh, I believe Jackie Cox from uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And they did a bunch of pre-show interviews uh, with people, including Patrick Stewart, uh, who also uh, had some nice things to say about Queen Elizabeth, who died recently. And then when they did get things underway, uh, there there was a person doing the music, Reggie Watts, from one of the late shows. I forget which one. Uh, Stephen Colbert's late show, I think. Anyway, uh, that was one of the things. He He must be a Star Trek fan. But that was one of the things where I was like, hmm, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I I wasn't sure what his musical contributions, how they were Star Trekian, but you know, he had he had enthusiasm for sure. <laughs> and you know, and, and he was used to playing along with um more or less comedic hosts. Uh, at one point, um, they were talking to a makeup artist. I forget that person's name, but um, they brought him out, and uh, one lucky person from from the audience was chosen to have some uh, makeup applied uh, to them. And a French Romulan cosplayer was chosen to get uh, some Romulan makeup applied. And uh, she looked great when they when they finally revealed it. Uh, I don't know, half an hour later or so. Uh, she looked wonderful. And then while they were panning the crowd at one point, uh, I think maybe during that segment, it might have been something else. But uh, in, in in the seats were this this beautiful uh, Ilea cosplay. And she had the, the little glowing neck gem thing that Ilea has in the motion picture. Uh, and just just the white outfit and the collared outfit and 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 the bald head. She looked she looked amazing, and uh, they had a, a a cosplay contest later in the in the show. And she happened to be one of the one of the four or five people that were chosen. The French Romulan cosplayer was also there, and then someone doing Garth with uh which was which was a, a pretty good costume and then someone playing Admiral Kirk from Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan and, and his name was Eric 
<laughs> interestingly enough, Eric from Pasadena, and uh, they made him do the the con scream, uh, which you know, I don't know that they needed to do that, but it was you know, I guess somewhat entertaining. I'm just going to go down the the list of things here. Essentially, as things were happening, I was taking notes. Uh, they jumped right into Star Trek Picard, and uh, Patrick Stewart came out and um, uh, said, uh, Picard is back in space. Uh, And he also said this. I thought this was interesting. Um, It's not a reunion. It is an essential gathering of all the most important elements of Star Trek The Next Generation in order to do what they do best. And then they showed, I guess, a short trailer for the new season. Uh, We get to see Beverly Crusher in some trouble. Seven of nine uh, commands the Titan, the USS Titan, uh, Riker's old ship. And uh, then we also get to see uh, some scenes between some conversation between Riker and Picard. And and some quick shots of uh, Deanna Troy, Jordy, and Worf. And this will be streaming on February 16th, the final, the third and final season of Star Trek Picard. So back to Stewart's comment, it's not a reunion. It's an essential gathering of all the most important elements. So at first I, I took that as, well, that's kind of a slap in the face to some of the, the people that were involved, some of the actors that were involved that are not there. But, you know, what does that really mean? Most of the, most important elements, not most important characters. So uh, given that we saw, and uh, hopefully you've all seen Star Trek Picard Season 2. <laughs> Um, given that we've seen Will Wheaton return at the very near the very end of that season, which I was very excited about. And by the way, I will be talking about that season soonish on, on the on the podcast. I have been taking notes for that and some other seasons of Star Trek shows, and I will get those out hopefully soonish. But I have been I've been horribly lax in getting um, uh, center seat content out into the podcast feed. So I hope to be rectifying that soon. Of course, uh, you know, data has ended, so to speak. I, I, I have a feeling we might see data again in some capacity in this new season. Uh, so, you know, but wh- what about some of the other other folks uh, from from Star Trek? And, you know, what is that? What does that all mean, really? Right. So I have, I, you know, spoiler alert for, I guess not really, but, but my, as far as my mm, perception, my, my, how I felt about Star Trek Picard uh, season two, um, uh, not great. It was, I was mm, <laughs> hate watching is <laughs> too strong of a word, but um, boy, I was, I was uh, disappointed in that season. Um, and so I was very hesitant, uh, about getting back into Star Trek season three, especially since, you know, it, with all the announcements of all the former castmates coming back together, a, you know, i.e. a reunion, I, you know, I was like, eh, you know, okay, that's fine. But given the, the lackluster elements of season two, mm, I, I'm not, I wasn't too excited about season three, but I uh, you know I'm getting, I'm getting more and more interested. So, uh, you know, we, we shall see, I, I will be watching it. Obviously it's, it's Patrick Stewart doing Picard and, and we get to see, uh, some stuff going on, you know, not on earth and crap like that. <laughs> Please no more time travel. Please. I hope, I, I, I really hope that Star Trek just, you know, puts a moratorium on time travel stories because I'm sick of them. Okay. Uh, Next up was a behind-the-scenes tour of the Discovery set led by Wilson Cruz. And what was really just neat about that was seeing how everybody uh, was interacting with each other, you know, in a uh, more or less informal setting, you know, not acting, not not performing scenes. He he talked to Sonequa Martin-Green as she was about to go do a scene, and she had some pages in her hand. Uh, and they're trying to, you know, play up the the spoileriness of it. Uh, and then she, he also talked to, oh boy, I can't remember. I can never remember this actress's name. And I'm so sorry, but uh, she plays uh, Tilly, and uh, uh, another person whom I am not familiar with because I've not watched Discovery season three. Is that right? I think yeah. I started season three, and and this character comes in in that season, I believe. 
A- anyway, uh, they were just chilling in, uh, what did they call it? Margarita Lane or Daiquiri Drive, or I don't remember what it was now. But, um, you know, they were just sitting there, uh, you know, chatting. And uh, apparently the, the cast members just kind of hang out there. And, um, and, you know, I, I just really love seeing them just kind of being, you know, people just hanging out and, uh, and whatnot, but they, but it, it, it seems to me that, you know, this, this cast is, is as much a family as, you know, say the next generation was, or, um, I don't know, I actually don't know that other casts, other Star Trek casts were, were known for that. Um, but, it, but it's nice to see. So, uh, also, um, I have to say Wilson Cruz is buff, man. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Um, then they, uh, they switched over to focusing on Will Wheaton for a little while. Basically two things, uh, you know, continue, they, they showed a bunch of clips of him interviewing, uh, folks from the Star Treks, uh, on the, the ready room, uh, which I need to, I need to watch more of that. Cause I, I love Will Wheaton. And, uh, you know, it's nice to get a little bit of behind the scenes stuff or, you know, just get the actors, uh, reactions to things. So, um, I should definitely do that before I do my, my season commentary <laughs> for, for those other episodes, but I probably won't cause I need to get those episodes out. Uh, but anyway, so there's, uh, there was a bunch of that, uh, there'd be more ready room. And then also, I guess the big news was that, uh, Will Wheaton, uh, will be joining Star Trek online as the mirror universe emperor, which, uh, that's kind of cool. It might, it kind of makes me want to go back, go back to Star Trek online and play that. I, I've, I've, I've tried over the years. Um, I got to a point in one of the, one of the missions where I just needed help and I couldn't really do it by myself. And so I just kind of stopped, <laughs> but I've dipped my toe into it, uh, every once in a while. And I just need to, I just need to get back into it. Cause you know, it's not a bad game. It's, it's not the best, but it's, you know, it's not bad. Uh, and so I guess uh, that's as of September 13th. So I'm recording this on the 11th. So by the time this gets out, that will have already launched. Uh, and then they switched over to uh, Lower Decks. And uh, we get to see, you know, that the cast got, came, some of the cast came, members came out and talked a little bit about the show. Uh, and then they showed a uh, a short clip promoting the show and the, the Cerritos is getting attacked and about to be destroyed. And, uh, another ship, uh, what looked like to me to be a sovereign class ship shows up and, uh, the, everybody's relieved, you know, they're going to be saved. And, uh, it, it's the USS Wayfarer. Hopefully I've, I've gotten this information right because I had to go, had to go look some of the stuff up and, and, uh, hopefully my sources are correct, but, um, the USS Wayfarer, uh, led by Captain, uh, Bucephalus Dagger. I just say Captain Dagger. Anyway, it it looks like Boimler. So I I, I think this is a um, a holodeck uh, thing. Maybe oh I I think I actually did read this. I think it is part of the it, it's a it's a it's a sequel to the the movie episode that they did where Mariner created a, a holodeck movie. And uh, so now I think we get we get maybe Boimler's version of the movie or his his own mo- movie. So you know of course starring himself. So that'll be kind of fun. So at this point, when I'm when I'm watching this, I, I realize wow, they're really trying to do. It's almost presented like a, like a comedy show, where they have a bunch of different guests come on and do their thing, but then in between, you know, the host or in this case, hosts are just you know bantering back and forth, trying to make the funnies. And you know, I I like Tani, I like her quite a lot because uh, I and Paul for that matter. Uh, as I listen to their Star Trek podcast, uh, you know, a year or two ago. But man, it was eh, it's kind of stretching it just a little bit, and 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 also there were a lot of there were a lot of uh, audio visual problems where they would be showing stuff. Uh, so uh, some of the segments were uh, interspersed with tributes from various people uh, who would come on and t- and basically talk about why they they love Star Trek. And uh, during one of those. Uh, Jason Alexander was doing one, and basically after the first minute of, or I guess thirty seconds or so of of him speaking, it cut out, and the the, the live stream went black, nothing, and then it came back, and basically he was he was signing off, so I totally missed it. I had to go back and watch it, uh, the the video capture of that, 
to hear what he was actually, you know, what he what, what he was saying in, uh, in its entirety. You know, maybe there was some because of these these technical issues. They were trying to to fill the gap, fill the time gaps, and and whatnot while they were doing stuff behind the scenes. I don't know. It, it just seemed a little disjointed. They were doing their best, uh, but so, like I said, sometimes it was just a little too much. And then they did an actual comedy segment. Brian Posen, I think, is is his name, uh, who who does or did the um, the the pack uh, a a pack led voice on Lower Decks. Uh, but he's a, apparently he's also a comic. Uh, I've seen him on other things too, over the years. But um, he came out and did a comedy routine, and it was not good. <laughs> oh, boy. So, you know, maybe maybe next time, um, you know, in the 57th anniversary Star Trek Day, maybe tone down the, the comedy aspects a little bit, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, next up was uh, a look at Star Trek Prodigy. Uh, we get a couple, well, to me, a couple uh, interesting revelations because I've only seen one, the first episode of Star Trek Prodigy and it was, it was fine. Uh, it did interest my uh, now 16-year-old granddaughter, Madison, uh, she really likes the, and I'll talk about this when I talk about the animated Lower Decks. Uh, she really likes that show. And so, um, and I'm trying to get into Star Trek and, and watching the, uh, the original series, uh, a few of those episodes, because I took her to see Star Trek, the motion picture, and then Star Trek II: the wrath of Khan on the big screen for their anniversary, uh, showings. And, uh, she, she, she didn't, she didn't like it. She doesn't like the uh, original series and it breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but but she seems to like the animated stuff. So we watched the first episode of Prodigy, and she wants to watch more. So I'm all for that. Um, anyway, so the Prodigy, they they showed a clip from the new season, and we get to see. And so the, this character flashes on the screen. I'm like, who the hell is that? Uh, I thought, well, is, is that is that like is that supposed to be Riker? Because he's got a beard. And and then I heard his voice. That's not Riker, but I, it sounds kind of familiar. And and then it hit me right before they say it. It's 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 a Akona from the episode, the Next Generation episode, the outrageous Akona. And so we get to see him all those years later. <laughs> so and and uh, as they revealed, um, because they had uh, uh, Janeway, the actress Kate Mulgrew, uh, come out and talk about the new the new season. Although. I have to say, when they brought out the actors, sorry for all, all the asides, but when they brought out the actors to talk about the new seasons, they the actors didn't really get to talk a whole lot about the actual season. Now, that could have been by uh, by design, or it was just the way that they conducted the, uh, the quote-unquote interview. So uh, Mulgrew didn't really have a lot to say, and she usually does <laughs> uh, in other interview situations that I've seen her in. So... I don't know. I don't read read into that as you will, but uh, but what she did reveal was that uh, the actor Billy Campbell, who played Okana in a con- what I, I said, Okana, outrageous Okana, uh, he's come back to do the voice for the animated version of himself. So that's kind of cool. Uh, they also, uh, like I said, I have not seen any other episode of Prodigy except for the first one, but we got to see the real Admiral Janeway pursuing the protostar that has the hologram version of Janeway. <laughs> so and and in a a ship that looked kind of like an advanced version of of the Voyager but really cool looking. So and I don't I think they said something about a, sl- a slipstream. I don't know if that was I I I I should have I should have uh, uh researched that just a little bit more. But anyway, it looked it looked kind of cool. So now I'm even more interested in watching more Prodigy. The the new season of that it comes out October 27th. They did uh as they should have uh honored Nichelle Nichols with a long moment of silence, which I appreciated. Whenever I see you know, televised things where they do a moment of silence, it's you know barely 15 seconds. And this was, I, I, I want to say, a good 20, 30 seconds of, of nobody saying anything, nothing's going on on the screen. So I really, I thought that was really classy of them. Uh, they also, of course, did um, a bunch of people talking about Nichelle Nichols and and her impact, her as Uhura, not only just as her as an actor, but her other efforts uh, helping NASA recruit more 
people of color to to be astronauts. Uh, you know, just just celebrating her her career and her accomplishments, and I thought that was really neat. Unfortunately, you know, as the actors get up there in age, of course, you know, we're every year we're going to be doing. I think they're going to be doing this. You know, and out of the original cast, we only have Shatner, uh, Takei, and Koenig left. So, yeah, that's going to be. I'm going to be pretty sad when when those those folks end up leaving us. So, and speaking of the original series cast, and this is I'm going to throw this in here instead of at the end, like I was planning on. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves of this year's Star Trek Day. They really focused on the active shows, Picard, Discovery, Lower Decks, Prodigy, and Strange New Worlds. And I guess, you know, Star Trek, because, you know, last year's the 55th anniversary, they really, they really celebrated all of the series, all of them. Um, and they didn't, they didn't do any of that this year. So this was, while it was fun and it was, you know, Star Trek day and all this, and I'm, I'm recording an episode about it, uh, you know, it was a glorified advertisement for these shows. Hmm. <laughs> I just, you know, it, it's Star Trek Day, not um, Paramount Plus uh, featuring Star Trek uh, special. So th- they need to pay respect to the original series and, and the others that came in the 90s. Now, granted, you know, Next Generation, I guess, and Voyager get their due with Picard and Prodigy, respectively. But um, that's not enough. Yeah. Okay. Off my soapbox. Oh, and uh, back to Nichelle Nichols. They had um, uh, when I said they 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 had a bunch of people talking about Nichelle. That was introduced by uh, Celia Rose Gooding, who plays the younger who are on Strange New Worlds. So I thought that was nice, a nice uh, connection there uh, of the character to the actors who portrayed her or portray her. And then in a very awkward uh blocking sequence uh Nicholas Meyer came out and uh I saw the the uh, uh behind the scenes guy tech guy pointing him towards the center of the stage to make this announcement and Nicholas Meyer I don't know didn't hear him or just ignored him and stood at one side of the stage the whole time to do this and um uh, basically he was out there to announce the new con show but not the con show which would have been a televised thing that that he was involved in that he pitched or he was I don't know what exactly what his involvement was but I mean he did talk about how he he took this idea to uh the powers that be and even kind of <laughs> slammed them a little bit by by uh his comments about them you know inexplicably inexplicably not picking it up but but they are moving forward with this 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 con series but as a podcast so Khan SETI Alpha 5 uh, will be released as a, a limited uh, podcast uh, series. So, and that's all they said. Uh, they didn't talk about who is, who's doing, you know, who are the actors doing the characters and all that kind of stuff. So I will be very interested to know who is playing Khan and, you know, basically what the premise is. You know, I assume it, it, it's going to be a prequel to uh, The Wrath of Khan in some way, of course, uh, since, since it has City Alpha 5 in the title. But, you know, is it the, at the beginning of them being on the planet or is it after the disaster that led to the decimation of the planet or somewhere in between? Quite honestly, I, you know, whenever they've talked about doing a con, concentric series, I've, I've never been interested. Uh, I, I don't know that I would even, I, I would. I'm such a Star Trek enthusiast that I'll watch anything, um, at least the beginning of it. So, but I, I, I really have no interest in Khan, you know, as a, a central character of an ongoing thing. But you know, maybe as a podcast series, like I said, I'll ch- I'll check out the first episode and see if it's uh, engaging enough. But uh, I I wholly endorse in that them doing more audio dramas in the Star Trek universe. I mean, this this should be. A no-brainer. I'm uh, Doctor Who's been doing it for years, and bringing back you know the the actors who portrayed uh, the Doctor uh, during their tenure to do these you know much you know years later doing these audio dramas. So why not you know if you can bring back you know I, I'm just thro- throwing this out there. I don't think that this would ever happen, but you know bring back Avery Brooks to do a Deep Space Nine audio drama. Uh, so you know 
things like that. They should really do that. All right, then there's this very weird, awkward, really pushing it uh, segment to, and I think I think uh, Tani and Paul were, while doing their best, they 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 kind of knew this was kind of uh, uh, crass is too strong of a word, but you know eh, they didn't really need to do this. But they, basically, they were promoting some merchandise, and uh, they had then they also brought out the, supposedly this this corporate person who you know some actress portraying this corporate person, but she did a good job <laughs> at in her role on this, but. Um, uh, there's going to be a Nerf phaser rifle. There's going to be uh, Pottery Barn Teen merchandise. And uh, if you go to pbteen.com shop slash new slash star hyphen trek, there's uh, like uh, bedding and pillows and I don't know, clocks and I don't, a bunch of stuff. But it's But it's geared towards teens who are interested in Star Trek, which, you know, that's actually really good. I th- that's a that's a great idea. I don't know that Pottery Barn is the best place to to sell that kind of stuff. You know, if you really want to reach a wider audience, but um, you know, if I'm ever in a Pottery Barn, which I'm <laughs> very rarely ever ever have been, uh, I might check it out. But and then also they they talked about the Playmates uh, figures and equipment. Uh, I think they said something about um, they're bringing back a you know like a original series phaser. Um, so those kind of things I might, uh, I might pick up. So, uh, as soon as the stuff comes, I'm not, I'm not big into the figure, the figurines type things, but, um, you give me the equipment, you know, I already, I have a phaser, uh, a next gen, not, sorry. I had one of the, I have one of those too. I have a next gen phaser and an original series phaser and, uh, they used to work. You press a button, it would make the sound, but the battery went out and I can't find batteries for it. Um, or batteries that fit weirdly enough. So, but, but I like that kind of stuff. I have the Spox tricorder. Um, what else do I have? I have some. Oh, the communicator. I have the 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 old style communicator, which I love that thing. That's so cute. All right. Anyway, final thing uh, that, uh, as far as my notes go, they they then did a strange new worlds segment to to end it basically. And um, we we get to see a short scene uh, featuring uh, Lieutenant Ortegas. And she's very excited to go on a landing party. <laughs> it's so, that sounds so strange to me now because, you know, ever since Next Gen for, you know, 20, 30, almost 30 years now, something like that, uh, it's always been away missions. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because cause, uh, Old Trek is their landing parties. So um, she actually, they use that term and I thought that was, that was really, really cool. And, but it sounds really, really, really weird coming out of my mouth. Okay, but anyway, she she's very excited to go on a landing party. Uh, they're dressed up in the the garb of the the the, the, the people, the society that they're going to go uh, infiltrate for whatever reason. And then Spock comes up with a, with a pad showing some I don't know some space weather that's not good, and and uh, Pike uh, basically cancels Ortega's landing party privileges and, because he needs her at the helm. So, and she does not take it very kindly, um, or uh, she kind of takes it out on Spock a little bit. <laughs> it was a great scene. It was a great scene. I, I really, spoilers uh, for my my Strange New Worlds uh, review, I love the show. Uh, basically, uh, also, um, uh, Celia said, uh, if you love season one, you'll love season two, which, okay, great, because I love season one. And they also announced that uh, we get a new chief engineer uh, played by Carol Kane. Uh, she's coming in as chief engineer, uh, I think it's pronounced Pelia, uh, to replace, uh, poor Hammer. Ah, just, oh, I, I have to talk about this, um, in the, in the Strange New Worlds episode, but man, poor Hammer. Okay. Anyway, that'll be streaming next year, of course. Okay. That's, that's all I have for Star Trek Day, uh, 2022, the 56th anniversary of Star Trek. And, uh, I, you know, Despite some of the things I don't like about Star Trek or how how things are being handled by the the powers that be at, at Star Trek, uh, I still love Star Trek and uh, I try to enjoy all of it in whatever capacity I can. And uh, hope to be talking to you more soon about some of these things and maybe keeping up with with stuff instead of waiting two years to talk about Star Trek Discovery, for example. So. Hopefully you are enjoying these as well. Uh, you know, this is why I started the center seat 
imprint on the Long Box Review comic book podcast feed because I love Star Trek so much. And uh, I assume you do too if you're listening to this. If you have any comments about Star Trek Day, uh, if you've watched it, uh, let me know uh, what you thought about these things. Uh, if I've if I've missed anything, let me know. You can send those missives uh, to longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also send me uh, text or voicemail at 208-953-1841 and chat with me on social media at longboxreview, all one word. And with that, may you live long and prosper. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.